Denver Broncos rookie cornerback Patrick Sertan in 2021 had such an electrifying season in Broncos country. How might he do as a sophomore here as he enters 2022? We break down our expectations of PS2 and why we believe he'll be even better this upcoming season. You get that and much more on today's brand new episode, Locked on Broncos. You are locked on Broncos, your daily Denver Broncos podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. What's up, Broncos country? Welcome back into a brand new episode of Lockdown Broncos, your daily Denver Broncos podcast here on the Lockdown NFL Network, your team every day from the South Stands to the end zone. I'm your host, as always, Cody Rourke, Broncos analyst for Mile High Sports. Join alongside by my co-host, Sarah Benedry. He's a site expert at predominantlyorange.com. Both of us cover the Broncos for the Lockdown Network and Nine News. And once again, Broncos country, thank you once again for making Lockdown Broncos your first listen of the day every single day. When you wake up in the morning, you have your cup of coffee, you go on a run, you go to the gym, you take us with you on your drive to work. We appreciate you so much, whether it's free and available everywhere you get your podcast in audio format or here watching us on YouTube. Make sure you hit that subscribe or follow button if you haven't done so already. Sarah, our expectation series continues on here today, and we are focusing on a fan favorite in Broncos country, and that is Patrick Sertan the second, the Broncos' first-round selection at cornerback from Alabama in the 2021 NFL Draft. Now, Sarah, this was at the time, just in hindsight looking back, I remember everybody in Broncos country was shocked that Sertan was the pick by general manager George Payton. But after everything that we saw throughout the season, after we saw the season play out, it goes to show that, hey, we knew this was the right choice and his play backed it up. So let's take a look at his rookie season in Broncos country. And Sarah, I'll tell you what, some memorable performances from him and just a couple off the top of the head. We're going to talk about the game against the Cincinnati Bengals. Unfortunately, the Broncos lost that game. But Jamar Chase, who set the offensive rookie record on fire last season, Patrick Sertan held him to one catch for three yards on four targets with PS2 primarily being the coverage guy. Unfortunately, it was a blown touchdown by the defense to a Tyler Boyd that really defined that game and obviously a quarterback fumble on a quarterback keeper that hurt the Broncos in a what could have been a huge one. That was a playoff game for them. I remember that. But I tell you what, lost in that performance was just how good PS2 was against Jamar Chase. And there was another guy he played pretty dang well against last season too. There was absolutely. He had a big game against Tyree Hill, who fortunately, Cody, he's no longer a problem for us, at least unless the Miami Dolphins happen to make the playoffs this season, but who knows if that's going to happen. But man, in hindsight, just looking back at that whole draft ordeal and everything surrounding that Broncos pick and everybody thought, hey, it's either going to be a quarterback or maybe the Broncos go with Micah Parsons or maybe they trade back and just try to get as much as they can for that selection. And you're absolutely right. I mean, George Payton kind of pulled the rug out from underneath all of us. He even said before the draft, he's like, yeah, I think we're in a pretty good position. We probably don't need to take a corner there uh, at number nine overall. And then all of a sudden, hey, here he comes with Pat Sertan the second. And I think that everyone was really surprised just to see that that strategy kind of take place and, and just the way that George Payton kind of went about that. And it was a lot of fun from a fan perspective to say, Hey, I mean, I love the unpredictability. I love the smoke screen. I love that kind of stuff. But a lot of people were really upset about this selection when it happened. And a lot of those same people, I'm willing to bet Cody that they're going to be out there scattered about training camp and at, at Broncos games this season among the 70,000 plus or whatever it is, and wearing that number two jersey. I bet you I'm just I'm just going out on a limb there. I'm going to say because he's now one of the foundational pieces of this entire roster. You don't go out and shut down Jamar Chase and then do the same to Tyreek Hill without getting a lot of fan attention. And he didn't do just that. It wasn't like, OK, we got to look at advanced metrics to find out how good was Pat Sertan. Like we need to we need to look up pro pro football focus and see what their grades are. We don't need to do that. You, this guy passes the eye test. Yeah. The pick six against Justin Herbert. We saw it in the in the preseason. Just you knew this guy was destined for greatness against the Minnesota Vikings, right? I mean, he just he made three plays in that game in the preseason that I think everybody was like, "Holy crap, this guy's on another level." He might not just be a first round <laughs> corner. He might be a top ten player at his position in the NFL. And I think he proved that over the course of last season, Cody. He absolutely shut guys down four interceptions, 14 passes broken up. 
And obviously the completion percentage against when targeted, we talked about in our episode yesterday about Tim Patrick and how he had a quarterback rating of 103 over the last two seasons when the ball was thrown his direction. Pat Sertan's like, hey, I'm about to cut that almost in half when the ball is thrown my direction. No, he spot on did that as well. I mean, a 61.3 QB rating when targeted in coverage. Now, the one thing that frustrated me last season is I felt like Patrick Sertan didn't get enough national recognition or attention. Everyone's talking about, oh, yeah, who are the top rookie corners this season? A lot of people are talking about Greg Newsome of the Cleveland Browns. And part of me has to wonder if the Broncos had good quarterback play, good offensive play last season, does he get the proper recognition? I think maybe. I think that has a lot to do with it because, look, we saw – Adding Russell Wilson to this football team gave the Broncos five primetime games and other games that will be seen by a national audience throughout this upcoming season. So I think that would definitely have a bigger effect there. But the one thing also stood out to me, one of his weaknesses that some people talked about, hey, consistency is a tackler. That was something that he, I think he struggled a tiny bit with early on in the season, but then he approved his efficiency, approved his angles that he was taking there. And it was something that even Vic Fangio, his former defensive coordinator, former head coach had said about him, he only missed five five tackles last season that is a 7.9 percent missed tackle rate which ideally you want to aim for something 10 percent and under that's where you want your guys to be he was 7.9 that is tremendous for the corner position especially when plays get to the outside you know that he's going to come up and he's going to wrap up and tackle and he demonstrated that year i mean play in and play out last season so i'm excited to see where ps2 goes this upcoming season but it begs the question what will his role look like here in 2022, entering year number two, a brand new defensive coordinator in a Giro Evro? We talk about what we believe we'll see him do this upcoming season. Coming up here in just a moment, but before we do that, let me tell you about Built Bar, the sponsor of today's episode, Locked On Broncos. And imagine dipping your finger into that plastic tub of birthday cake frosting and then opening your eyes and realizing that was only 150 calories and 16 grams of protein. That is what it is like to eat a birthday cake puff from Built Bar. It's a brand new flavor that's been released, and we want you to go check Check it out at built.com here today. Built bars are fantastic, covered in 100% milk chocolate, but they're soft and they're easy to chew. And as we mentioned, each bar contains around 17 grams of protein, 130 calories, and only four grams of sugar. And we want you to go to built.com today to see the nine amazing original flavors, plus the occasional limited time flavors and the built granola bars that have just launched. But we also want you to get 15% off your next order here today by using promo code LOCK15. And that's going to get you 15% off your order today at built.com. As we continue on today's episode, Lockdown Broncos talking about Patrick Sertan the second entering his second season in the National Football League. What will his role look like here in 2022? We get to that coming up here in just a moment, but just had to take a moment to say, hey, mile high salute to everybody in Broncos country. Thank you so much for once again making Lockdown Broncos your first listen of the day every single day. Both Sarah Bettinger and myself, we appreciate you so much. We love to talk all things Denver Broncos news, content, and coverage, and you get us every single day all year long because for the true fan, there is never an off season. Sir, I think the conversation that we're going to enter here regarding PS2 and maybe what his role will be in 2022, not much has changed schematically. The scheme is really going to stay the same for the most part for this Broncos team. Three, four is going to be their style. A lot of nickel and a lot of dime personnel is what we project to see a ton of here this upcoming season outside of just the base three, four defense. But for Patrick Sertan, the second, I'm a big believer Keep it simple, stupid, right? Because he doesn't have to do much more. Like he has defined himself, in my opinion, Sarah. We know what his role is. He's going to be your number one cornerback option. And ideally, he should be the guy that's followed around the opposing team's wide receiver one, no matter where they go, whether it's on the outside, whether it's on the inside. I think we see Patrick Sertan kind of play that role this season for the Broncos. And I hate to make this comparison because everyone, for some reason, hates when you do this. But even the guy himself says, hey, you can see a lot of similarities. But I just remember a time when the Broncos had a guy in Champ Bailey who would literally go where the number one wide receiver was, and he would take away that side of the field. I foresee PS2 evolving to be that guy. Will he be it right away in the second season? I'm not sure, but he's got the potential to do it. And I think that's exactly what we will see from him at some point in his career. And I think that one thing that's really great about this coaching staff and everybody needs to be mindful of this. Remember Nathaniel Hackett, he was in Jacksonville for a few years, right? And this last couple of years, where did Ejiro Evero and the, the some of the defensive assistants come from? They came from the Los Angeles Rams. There's one guy that played for both those teams over that time frame, Cody, 
that I think needs to get, you know, a, a little bit of this comparison thrown in, and that's Jalen Ramsey, who obviously has played for the Jaguars and the Rams, and, and the, the staff in Denver is very familiar with Jalen Ramsey, what he brings to the table, the different things that he can do. I, you follow along with some Rams beat reporters here and there, and you find out, like, the, the Los Angeles Rams have been very creative in ways that they've utilized Jalen Ramsey because – nobody throws his direction when he's just playing on the outside, right? So they've been finding different ways to get him involved in the defense because he's a playmaker. So I would highly encourage everybody to just do a little Google search on, on Jalen Ramsey and find out like, Hey, how the, how have the Los Angeles Rams been utilizing him the last couple of seasons? And then go watch some of the tape, which I'm going to do, Cody, as we get deeper into this offseason, you know, June, the dog days of the offseason. That'll be something that maybe we talk about in a future episode. But I feel like that's kind of your your spot on. The Broncos once upon a time did that with Champ Bailey. The Los Angeles Rams have been doing that with Jalen Ramsey. And, and I think that's what they need to do with Pat Sertan the second, because there's going to come a time when the, the teams are just going to stop throwing the ball his direction because he's cashing in on so many of these opportunities, especially when he's able to keep his eyes on the quarterback and really just, just attack the ball in the air. That's where I think he, he's been so dangerous. He's proven himself to be a ball hawk, where I think that was kind of a slight concern for some people coming out of Alabama because he played a lot of man coverage and didn't get the ball thrown his way very often. So seeing that change going forward, really thinking about how did the Broncos used to utilize Chant Bailey? How do the Los Angeles Rams currently utilize Jalen Ramsey? I think those are different ways that we can see. We have it in our show notes here. I mean, will we see him play in the slot at all? Remember last year before the season even started, he was supposed to be the dime, the yeah. dime corner. So, I mean, we know he can do all that stuff and he's capable. So will we see that from a zero Evero and the defensive staff that's in Denver now? How, how often will we see this chess piece moved around? Because he's going to need to be on the team's, uh, the team, the opponent opposing team, excuse me. I'm getting too excited talking about this guy. He's going to be on their, their best receiver over the course of a game, at least we hope or we imagine. Well, and I think that's where we've seen teams, especially the Chargers, they like to run a lot of those stack trips formations close to the line of scrimmage, close to the offensive linemen, so they can do crossing patterns, rub routes. But even then, like I, I noticed just Patrick Sertan, the second, he takes such great angles. He's a great identifier. And we've heard even Ajiro Evro here saying one thing he's looking at, especially like with OTAs, guys getting back on the field and obviously no contact, but going through installs. Down and distance, D and D, right? Situational football. Hey, what are our splits here? Third and fifteen. What are our splits? D and D situation. And that's exactly how he breaks down his study. And he is so ingrained in the film room, sir, that you, when you combine his work ethic with the technique that he has, with the film and the cerebralness to him, I tell you what, he's going to be a special player. I have nothing but great things to say about him. But also, could we also maybe see him this upcoming season become a defensive captain? Now I know Justin Simmons has one of the captain patches. Rightfully deserved there. Josie Jewell was a guy who also had it, unfortunately was injured. Will Josie Jewell get it, or could we see Patrick Sertan get one of the captain jerseys? That's one thing I want to see. The patch on his jersey, I think he's got it in him. He's been a, a fantastic leader. And even like guys like Kwan Williams, Ronald Darby this offseason said, hey, when you look at how that man played last year, you didn't think he was a rookie at all. Like he was a seasoned vet. And I just remember there was a game. It was the Cleveland Browns game Thursday night football. There were a lot of top premier cornerbacks in the NFL who were watching that game and they were live tweeting like, hey, that PS2 looks nice, like great technique. That's when I started to think, okay, hey, you know, real recognizes real. That's one of the most important things I think that you can have, Sarah, when we talk about breaking things down, how a cornerback can evolve. And I think that's why PS2 will be even better here in 2022. But how is he going to get there? That's going to be something we talk about coming up here in just a moment. But before we do that, let me tell you about BetOnline.net, the sponsor of today's episode, Lockdown Broncos. And our partners at BetOnline continue to be the number one source for all your betting needs and sports information this season. You can find all the latest odds, news, sports developments, including this year's basketball playoffs, Major League Baseball scores, fights, and even next season NFL futures, as you can predict who you believe the division winners will be and maybe make some money off of it as well. And BetOnline is your continued source for all your sports wagering information from live betting to playoffs, esports, and more. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and the action. BetOnline.net. BetOnline, where the game starts.
As we jump into the fourth quarter action on today's episode of Lockdown Broncos, once again, thank you so much, Broncos country, for making Lockdown Broncos your first listen of the day every single day. If you're a Colorado sports fan, one thing we also want to you encourage you about is, hey, check out the other Colorado sports we have going on here, the Lockdown Podcast Network. You have the Lockdown Rockies Podcast as the Rockies continue throughout this Major League Baseball season. Lockdown Nuggets is still ongoing. What's next for them after the Nuggets lost in the playoffs to the Warriors when the Kola Jokic get a Supermax and also Lockdown Avalanche as the Avs look to to win a Stanley Cup here this season, check it out the Lockdown Podcast Network. Sarah, why will Patrick Sertan the second be even better in 2022? And it's even kind of scary just thinking about looking at him. Like for me, I have all the Broncos film and all their games on this iPad right here in my huddle account. And I tell you what, there's times I'll just go back and I have certain plays marked where I just watch Patrick Sertan. He is such a technician, Sarah, and that's one thing that stands out. And I have to ask myself this question, too, because I think the players ask it. How can a guy who's such a sound technician become even more technically sound, right? It feels kind of like a redundant question to ask there. But here's the mindset of a defensive back, Sarah. Having played the position, one thing I always looked at, I would go back and watch film on myself. What could I do to improve? He's already done all that. He's already jotlined and outlined kind of what he believes he needs to do better going into this upcoming season, how he could have maybe attacked the ball on a certain play, how he could have attacked the wide receiver stem. He thinks about these things according to people close to him, and I just can't help. He's got that mentality. He's always going to find ways to get better. I tell you what, a PS2 that gets even better is scary for the rest of the NFL. It is. I mean, you hear this kind of thrown out there a lot, Cody, but like the game slowing down for certain guys. And it just feels like the game has slowed down such a rapid pace for Patrick Sertan. I reference this a lot, especially last year as he was coming out of the draft. Right. You know, it looked like as a freshman at Alabama, because I previously covered the NFL draft every single year for almost 10 years at fan sided. And I just remember watching PS2 in his freshman year at Alabama. I remember watching games of other defenders that they had, you know, and all of a sudden this guy would be standing out. And the reason being for that is because, first of all, he's huge. I mean, he looks he looks way older than an 18 year old that's out there playing in you know the national championship game as Alabama does every year but you just watch him from an early age and you see this guy that's like man he just he just looked like a pro football player even at the age of 18 i mean there's very few guys that you can look back on throughout history like Adrian Peterson at Oklahoma the dude just looked like he should have come right out of high school to play in the NFL i think Patrick Sertan the second is very similar like it, his bloodlines aside like obviously his dad was a very good defensive back in the nfl but it's it's just innate in him i mean it's just something that's that you sense watching like i'm not a former defensive back like you are so i don't notice a lot of the little detail things like i never played defensive back or anything like that but it's just something that's innate in a guy when you watch him play when you watch him work it's like yeah, you know, a lot of people will call it like the it factor, right? And that's just that's just something that I think a casual football fan, that's that's why you buy a jersey for a guy like this. A casual football fan will watch PS2 play and they'll see what other people are saying. Like you said previously, the real recognizing real out there on the field. And, and people can see that. They can sense that. They can feel that watching Patrick Sertan play the mm. game. And I think that next that next step that he can take – Man, be the very best. Enough of this conversation about Jalen Ramsey and AJ Terrell and, <laughs> and Denzel Ward. Let's get PS2 up to that level. He can get there. He's that type of player. He's that type of athlete, and he is that good. So I think that's what we're going to see in 2022. He's going to get into that best conversation. Well, and we've seen cornerbacks like Denzel Ward, Jair Alexander reset the cornerback market in this offseason here. And look, hey, PS2 is entering his second season. Could you imagine maybe what the cornerback market might look like? Let's say if he keeps up the pace that he's playing at when it's time for a contract extension for him, what type of money might he get? I mean, I think it's based on market value and things like that, but man. I tell you what, the NFL is getting crazier, and obviously the salary cap continues to rise and will continue to rise over the next couple of years in excess up to $220 million, which there, hey, if that's the case, I would love to see what George Payton and, and his staff can do with $220 million when it comes to contracts and some of the volumes that we've seen from them. 
Now, there's another thing I want to touch on here real quick. You know, a lot of people talk about the thing, the term sophomore slump. I think it's a lot harder, though, Sarah, for DBs to fall into this realm because it's different. Like quarterbacks, you kind of expect sometimes to be a sophomore slump because of the fact that their position is so unique and what they do, the responsibilities that they have is so different. Realistically, going back and playing cornerback, it's about evolving. It's about your technique, making sure that you're sharp, you're sound, you're in position, you understand angles, you understand where to attack on a wide receiver when he's attacking upfield and breaking in. How can you attack the top of his stem there and cut him off? These are things that they think about here. So I don't necessarily think that there's a sophomore slump. Now, if he were to ever come off of an injury, and I think this is something where cornerbacks get affected, corners coming off of an injury, let's say like a serious injury, as you've seen, and this is something we're monitoring with Jeff Akuda, the Detroit Lions this season. He's coming off an Achilles. How does he rebound back from that? Because being a corner, you revolve so much on planting and cutting. If PS2 continues to stay healthy at the rate that he has, which he does a great job taking care of his body, Sarah, I tell you what, this is going to be a guy that I think will be a lot of people watch him here this upcoming season potentially and say, hey, it seems like this guy's been in the NFL for years with the way that he plays. And I think that's the praise that he's gotten from some people right now, especially some really good wide receivers in this league. And hey, I tell you what, it's going to get a little bit more challenging with some of the additions inside the AFC West. When we talk about the Kansas City Chiefs adding Sky Moore, Justin Ross, you know, even to that to the MVS is the McCole Hardman's. But then you add Devontae Adams into the mix in Las Vegas alongside Hunter Renfro. Darren Waller, and then you go to the Chargers, Keenan Allen, Mike Williams. I mean, this is going to be a loaded wild, wild west, but I'm so glad that the Broncos have a guy like PS2 to be able to lock up some other guys. But Broncos country, thank you so much for tuning in to today's episode of Lockdown Broncos. Tomorrow's episode of the show, we're going to talk about his counterpart, Ronald Darby. Why is Broncos country underrating Ronald Darby this offseason, and why might he prove them wrong this upcoming season? We'll talk about that on tomorrow's episode of the show. Make sure you hit that subscribe and that follow button so you never miss out on a day's worth of Denver Broncos news, content, and coverage.